Hello and welcome to this After Effects tutorial on how to make a motion graphics bounce title similar to the one you're seeing on screen right now. So this is quite a common motion graphics technique. It can be added to text or images or graphics you created yourself. And there's quite a few different ways to do it with expressions or with keyframes. Today we're going to be looking at doing it with keyframes and we're also going to be looking at how to adjust them to make it all seem a bit smoother and a bit nicer looking. So let's begin. Right, so to start off, you want to go ahead and create a new composition. I'll be using some of the default settings as this step doesn't really matter and it's completely dependent on your project. Once this is done, you want to import any footage you'll be applying the effect to. For me, I'm going to be using some Photoshop documents I created earlier on, but like I said before, this effect can be used on absolutely anything from text to images from the internet. I've chosen to use these PSDs as when I import them, this little box comes up and it gives me the option to work with the layers as a pre-comp, meaning when I click them, uh, each layer is editable, like so. Now I'm going to go ahead and delete some of the layers as I don't exactly need them for this. Right, so I'm going to start by turning off the first few layers as I only need to work with the bottom one to begin with. I'm going to go ahead and press S on the keyboard to bring up the scale option and then I'm going to immediately set a keyframe at its first position. I'm then going to adjust the scale to be 0 and then I'm going to go to its final position, for me it will be 11 frames in and I'm going to set the scale to 100, which will be my final size that I want it. Now if we get this quick playthrough, you'll see we have this expanding animation, which isn't exactly what we want. So we're going to add a few more keyframes to this uh, to achieve the effect that we want. So the next keyframe we want to add in has to be about halfway between the two. It doesn't have to be precise and it can be adjusted afterwards. So I'm going to go ahead and rest at 5. And I'm going to adjust this so it's slightly bigger than my final size. So for me, this will be 110. Now if we play through again, you'll see we have this pop effect. It doesn't quite bounce, so to finish the effect, we're going to have to add another keyframe between the second keyframe and the final keyframe. With this, we're going to want to make the scale slightly lower than the final keyframe. For me, this will be 90, so let's go ahead and add that in. And if we watch through for a final time, you'll see we now have that nice pop effect. So there is a few different ways we can improve on this effect. The first one I'm going to show you is Graph Editor, which is located just above your timeline over here. If we click on the scale now, you'll see the keyframes in a graph, and you'll see it getting bigger, then smaller, and then finally resting on that final position. Well, if you click on a keyframe here, you can go to the bottom bar and click this, which is Easy Ease, and it will turn that line into a curve. Now, you can also do this on the normal timeline by right-clicking, going to Keyframe Assist, and clicking Easy Ease, or by pressing F9. They do exactly the same thing. I thought I'd show you through the graph though, as you can see the effects a bit easier. You'll notice when we play through now, everything's a little bit smoother. But if we go into the graph editor once more, you can see it's turned that last one into a curve as well. The only difference is in the graph editor, you can adjust the curve slightly. I'm gonna leave it. Now we've made the effect, I'm gonna go ahead and copy and paste these keyframes onto all the other layers, which will duplicate the effect and uh, give us what we want, this big pop effect for all the layers. If I paste them onto here, uh, you'll see it pastes at exactly the same time, looks exactly the same. I'm going to offset this slightly just so we have this sort of variation and this look that we want. And then I'm going to go ahead and do exactly the same to the other three layers. Let's first turn them on so we can see the effects and paste those on. And as you can see by pressing U, I've bought up all those keyframes. I'm going to offset this layer and these top two layers I want to actually be the same so I'll just offset them to a similar position and let's extend the timeline and watch that through, we get this. Now I wanted to point this out actually, as we're working inside of composition, because we've expanded stuff bigger than its larger scale, you've got to watch your edges. As you can see on this one here, we actually expand over. Now to avoid this, just go ahead and go to composition settings and make it slightly bigger than we want. So I'll go 1200 and that'll be absolutely fine. Now we won't go over those edges. I'm going to go back to the original composition that we made and I'm going to drag and drop that graphic into it. I want a background for this, so I'm going to go and drop the other composition that I bought in with it onto there. Now this looks fine, looks great, but I wanted to sort of replicate the same sort of energy and the same sort of pop and bounce, so I'm going to go into that. So you'll see we've got these two layers and on one of them we've already got these masks. We don't actually need these, we can delete these. These were shape data, and um, this is just Photoshop and After Effects not quite translating it perfectly, but that's absolutely fine. 
we're going to go ahead and make our own mask on this uh, by obviously selecting it and then go into the mask tool and then I'm going to go ahead and draw a, a circle on here or ellipse and I'm holding down shift and command so it stays central. Once we've got this I'm going to set a keyframe from the path and I'm going to move it along a little bit as this is what I want the final position to look like. Then I'm going to go ahead and double click on my mask and I'm just going to adjust the scale down holding shift and command there again and this time you can see it just slowly expands the size. I'll also add a feather. I'm going to go with about 200, nice smooth feather. So that looks good to me. I'll also move this along slightly so when we go back to the original composition you'll see it just pops in slightly afterwards with everything else. And that's the effect. The only thing to do is add sound effects to this and you are complete. This graphic was created for my new gaming channel. The link is in the description for anyone who's interested. For everyone else though, thank you and goodbye.